All right, today is September the 10th, 2016, and we're looking at the Northeast Pacific Water Vapor Loop. And this is now a gale force system here. This yesterday was a storm. Still has a 987 millibar core pressure, but we see that it's very distorted in the uh, in the center of that system. We have it a right angle here. This was a perfect right angle about two, three hours ago. We have clockwise rotation right in this area, and that proves descending air from a transmitter. And the transmitter, of course, is used to weaken the storm. And uh, we can see all that uh, very distorted uh, weather right in the center of that system. Now, if we look at this in the uh, in the rainbow loop, we can see a perfect right angle right here on this side of the front, right there. We can go ahead and stop that and put the envelope in it. And what's happening here is that is that as that heat is applied on top of that core of that spinning low, what, what's happening is that this frontal system will eventually become uh disconnected from from this uh weather system so if we go ahead and run this uh right now <clears throat> we can see what's happening here we have clockwise rotation and uh as this progresses we can see that uh that will uh, break away this frontal system will break away from from that uh spinning low now down here we have a a, a very large area of thunderstorms <clears throat> which uh, has a 30 percent chance of hurricane formation right here over here we have a uh, area of thunderstorms. This is a disturbance with 100% chance of hurricane formation. <clears throat> and let's look at the uh, water vapor map. Once again, uh, we see that uh, we have this upper level low, which has moved just slightly north. It's now over the uh, central California area. This has a transmitter on it. This should be delivering a lot of rain uh, right over California. We can see that right there. The pressure maps still indicate low pressure over this area, although the transmitter has weakened uh, and changed the pressure maps as a result. Now all this monsoonal moisture is still not able to get into the core of that vortex. However, some of it, just a small amount right up here, has uh, crept in and we see that that area right there is a little bit of rain in California. If you go and take a look now at the uh, western U.S. water vapor map, we can see that there is some amount of rain right here over the uh, high Sierra. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Doppler map right now. And we can see that uh, I've got it kind of uh, centered on Huntington Lake, California, which is right here. Mammoth Lakes are uh, just up in this area. And so there is some rain showing up on the uh, Doppler map. All right, so um, let's go back to the water vapor map and we can see how that all is happening. Some of this uh, monsoonal flow uh, got into that vortex. Now that may be by design, it may be accidental, uh, but the point is, is that this moisture yesterday was completely barricaded. We had that uh, very straight uh, line, that uh, phased array transmitter that had uh, built in a, uh, a blockade right through this area, and none of this moisture was getting anywhere near that low, but today we see that very upper side of that uh, moisture field is creeping in and just that amount is causing what we're seeing on the radar map so this is very important to understand how these people are controlling our weather we see all that rain zoom in a little bit you can see that it's scattered but it is up at the snow level we see uh, there's yosemite national park you're probably having an early snow in that area possibly okay Let's go back again at the water vapor, take a look at the water vapor map. We see uh, just that small amount right there. So this transmitter is, is, is the reason why California has a serious drought. And I'm hoping that uh, uh, all the politicians are, are you know, I, I hope that some of the politicians might catch one of these videos once in a while and see what's going on. There's, that's the reason for our drought. We've got people that are aiming transmitters at, at these uh, low pressure systems. Here's the uh, infrared uh, loop. See the returns there. Some 
rain falling. All right, uh, let's go take a look at the National Hurricane Center map real quick. We have now, as of about 20 minutes ago, we have officially a tropical depression. This is 16E, just identified within the last 15 minutes. That's the last time I checked this map. We have a 35 mile per hour winds indicated, 1,008 millibar uh, core pressure, and this is a moving northwest at 12 miles per hour. So we're going to keep an eye on that. All right, um, let's go take a look at the uh, solve these maps. Here's the Central Pacific. We have a huge area of thunderstorms out near the, just southeast of the or southwest of the islands, uh, with a 20% chance of hurricane formation. If we go ahead and take a look at the Hawaiian map right now, we can see the water vapor loop. There's a very large area of, of thunderstorm activity out there. So this looks a lot more intense than uh, the uh, thunderstorms over uh, over here. So this is a 100 percent. Well, actually, we got a depression now, like I just said, right there. But this is a much larger area of uh, thunderstorms, as we can see, a lot more intense. OK, all uh, right, let's take a look at the uh, Okay, let's go ahead and refresh that. Here's the infrared loop. And there's quite a bit of intensity throughout that area. And notice the high pressure that is protecting the Hawaiian Islands. That will uh, prevent this uh, area from moving in over those islands. We do see some of that weather moving over Hawaii. In fact, let's go take a look right now and see what's uh, happening over here in Hawaii right now. If I can get this map to work right. Give me about 30 seconds here while we fool around with this map. Okay, so we're, we are seeing uh, some uh, weather, some weather out there, uh, some rain. Well, that's good news. We can always use some rain. Okay, very good. Let's take a look at the uh, pressure maps here. Uh, this is the sea level pressure map for the eastern Pacific. And we can see that uh, we have that high pressure. That's always there. And that's going to block this uh, gale force system. That will prevent that from dropping down. We have some uh, low pressure indicated right, right here through uh, eastern California. And uh, also a part of Arizona. All right. Let's look at the 500 millibar next. We have uh, these two areas of low pressure have merged. So we have uh, mid-level uh, low pressure right here. Part of that is that uh, upper level low that we were just talking about, This that, that dry upper level low. All throughout here we have high pressure, and that's why the barometer today is up at the 30.02. We've had high pressure the last four days uh, in preparation for this, this upper level low that should be uh, delivering rain to the state of California. But uh, we have engineered high pressure all through here, and that's going to uh, prevent that low from developing, as we were talking about earlier. Here's the 300 millibar map, and we can see that center right there, that low. We have another one right over here. but. Also, we have a lot of squiggly lines right here and indicates varying degrees of high and low pressure as the transmitter continues to squash out uh, this uh, upper level low pressure system, which is spinning counterclockwise. We've got high pressure all through this area, and uh, that is preventing the rain. Okay, here's the surface analysis map. We can see that uh, gale force system up in uh, the Gulf of Alaska right here near the Aleutian Islands. We have 987 millibar indicated. That's a gale moving to the northeast. We've got this front. That's the uh, transmitter. <laughs> that warm front right there. We've got a cold front down over here. And we, we have all this high pressure. That's going to block this uh, system. You've got a couple of highs indicated here and a trough and a couple of lows. Yet the barometer is reading 30.02 here in the foothills. All right, let's take a look at Alaska <clears throat> right now. This is that that, uh, that uh, low pressure gale, that low pressure system. 
the right angle on it, we can see uh, here in the water vapor map uh, what's happening. We've got high pressure on this side that's going to spin this uh, frontal system off to the uh, off to the one side. Let's look at this now in the uh, rainbow loop. And we can see some pretty straight edges. Let's go ahead and stop this. So it's a fairly well defined uh, right angle right right here. This edge here particularly is very straight. That's a couple hundred miles long each each side of that. We can fit that envelope in there pretty well. That fits very well. So this is what the transmitters do. This is a phased array transmitter. It's highly directional, and that's what causes this uh, these uh, geometric shapes. That's applying heat, descending air, which is heat, to this system. That's why we have a clockwise rotation up over here in this map. If we go look at that again, we can see the clockwise rotation right up there. That's where we were just looking. There's that right angle. So uh, here it is. This is why we have droughts. And this is why the weather all over the place is so so odd, very strange. Up in Anchorage, Alaska, uh, last winter, I find out that it didn't barely get down below 30 degrees in certain areas, right around the uh, Anchorage area and in, in, uh, inland. <clears throat> so that's very strange. Uh, and the weather up there has been as screwy as it has been down down here in uh, Southern California in terms of, of abnormal, you know, just the the abnormal pattern. Uh, of, of the weather. All right, so that's it. Uh, tomorrow's September 11th, and I'll have some uh, information that people should see on September 11th. So we'll uh, do another one tomorrow. All right, that's it.